girl. Hey, hey how, how are you? you? Oh, so good. It's so good to see you. You too. You look great already. Oh my goodness. Oh. So do you. <laughs> this dress is giving. Oh, thank you. I'm going to steal it. <laughs> I'm going to steal it. You're going <laughs> to leave it thing. here. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Love this. Listen, I have an announcement to make. Okay. Eve is my new homegirl. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Eve is my new homegirl, and I know that's challenging for a lot of people to hear, but I want you to hear me out. Eve had her most vulnerable moment, like for the world in generations, yes. to read and hear about, and like the fall of humanity is placed on her okay. shoulders. Mm -hmm. And the other day I was thinking, you know what, like if I had my most vulnerable moment publicized, I could only imagine how lonely I would feel. And it just made me think about all of these different times in my life where I had those vulnerable moments. I think probably one of my most vulnerable was the first Sunday that I went back to church after having my son. And, you know, I was 14 years old and I was young and I'm holding this baby. And my parents are like, you know, you're not going to hide. You're going to still show up. But I wanted to hide. And that's how I feel like Eve probably just won. I mean, she did. She hid in that moment. But anyways, I'm at church and my dad's like, I want to welcome my daughter and my grandson back to church for the first time. And he was like, Sarah, stand up. And I stood up there with my baby and... I just, I didn't know, you know, what people would say, what people would think, because this is like confirmation of my moments where I didn't show up as the best version of myself, those moments where I was still learning and growing. And I started looking at Eve differently, and I'm like, I feel like we all have a little Eve moment, those moments that are like the most publicly vulnerable. Yeah. Vulnerability is either your grave or your growth. And that's what I learned about myself. If I'm not ready to be vulnerable about something and I'm pushed into it or prematurely, then it's gonna create a catastrophic moment for me that I'm not ready to process. That's I don't think that there is any place where a woman gets more naked than the hair salon. Go with me now, I'm taking you on a journey. Okay, when we go into the hair salon, this is the place where all of our truth is coming to the surface. It's the place where we admit that we cut the bangs ourselves. It's the place where we admit that that postpartum is causing hair loss. It's the place where we say, I've gone through this divorce, I've gone through this change, and I'm ready for something different, I just don't know what it is. There, in that sacred space of the salon, we reveal our nakedness in hopes of transformation. Isn't it crazy that the correlation between transformation doesn't happen unless we're willing to get naked? Naked and transformation. I wonder what would happen in our souls and our spirit if we were willing to be just as naked, just as vulnerable, in hopes of being transformed. It's so much easier to stay put all together than to bear it all. We want everyone to think that we have it all together, that the grief isn't that heavy, that the weight and the burdens and depression aren't weighing on us the way that they are. But the truth is, if we allowed ourselves to get naked, then maybe we could say the words that we're whispering in our pillows at night. This is hard. I'm stressed. I'm worried. These are the truths that we whisper when we're willing to get naked with ourselves, but maybe not in our relationship with God. We wouldn't dare do it in our friendship circle. And yet if we want to experience transformation, it is the only way that we can have real connection with God. Um, so when I was younger, I was molested and I felt like I needed to be free of the shame that came from that. So I, I don't know, like I just felt like God just was knocking. He was like, no, we gotta deal with this. Yeah. And I didn't know how to deal with it, but to, cause for a long time, I would never admit, like I was in a, a young girls group and I was like, I would never mm -hmm. admit that. And I think that's where God was like, no, yeah. you gotta release that. And once I did, um, 
yeah, I, I felt like a huge weight lifted off of me. I felt free. I didn't feel ashamed anymore. Because you would expect to feel more shame yeah, exactly. by being That's exposed in that way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I felt free. I felt I'm so much better from being exposed in that way. Mm, that's so good. You know, I think part of the reason why we don't want to get naked is because we feel like this is going to be a billboard for all of my mistakes, fears, and insecurities. And let's be honest, ain't nobody got time for that. Nobody wants to sit back and think about all of the things I could have done better. No one wants to deal with regret. But our perspective of our nakedness and God's perspective of our nakedness are two different things. When God sees you naked, God doesn't see all of those scars and mars and stretch marks. What God sees instead is who he created. God is more interested in preserving the memory of what he created than who you have become in order to survive. That means when God calls us to nakedness in our relationship with the Lord, what he's saying is you can tell me your truth. You can tell me what you're experiencing. You can tell me about the excitement you're afraid to share. You can tell me about the fear that you're afraid to spread out into the world. You can tell me about that sadness, that anger. You can get naked with God. There is nowhere else in the world that you can allow yourself to be that empty, that vulnerable, like when you're in the presence of God. And God says, I want you. I want the authentic version of who you are. I don't want who everyone is pulling on. I don't want who you show up as when you come to church. I don't want who you are pretending to be so that everyone else can lean on your strength. I want you to dare to be naked as when I formed you in your mother's womb. There's nothing about what you are experiencing. There's nothing about what you have felt or even the trauma that you have faced in your past that God hasn't already seen. The question is, are you willing to allow the presence of God to meet you so that you can be transformed? There's a version of you that God holds in his mind. Jeremiah 1 and 5 says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. That means that when God formed you, he already had a vision of who you were. And yet life happened. And life tried to change that vision. Life tried to put all of these labels and these experiences on you that covered you with fig leaves. But God says, what I want to do in the earth, I can only do through the most authentic version of who you are. And in our relationship with God, we have an opportunity to pick apart the fig leaves that life has placed on us. And instead say, God, I want you to cover me. Those vulnerable moments where we feel like we are on display with humanity, it's not the same thing as being on display with God. Let me tell you how cold our God is. Can I say that? Can I tell you that God is cold? I want to tell you how cold our God is. God is so cold. God is so in love with you. God is so God that when he sees all of your transgressions and all of your sins, your mistakes, your trauma, and your wounds, he says, I forget them out of my mind. It doesn't mean that he doesn't see them at all, but Isaiah 43 and 25 teaches this, that God says, I, even I, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake. That means God says, in order for me to maintain my holiness, in order for me to maintain the vision I have for your life, in order for me to continue to be faithful the way that I am faithful, I have to blot out your transgressions. When we strive to have relationship with God, our goal is to see our ourselves the way God sees us. I don't know about you, but I want to see myself the way that God sees me. I want to see myself without my transgressions, without my sins, without my mistakes, without all of those moments where I missed the mark. Let's be clear. This doesn't mean that God doesn't see our sins. God sees them. God understands those moments where we miss the mark. This just means that God doesn't take a temporary moment and put it into your permanent record. When God looks at you, he sees the fullness of how you became who you became. He sees why you did what you did. Maybe you still missed the mark. Maybe you still could have made a better choice. But at the end of the day, God says, I've got to blot that out of my mind so that I can continue to show up for them. I'm wondering if you can come to a space where you have enough faith 
to continue to show up for you in that same way. To say, God, I want to love myself. God, I want to love my life. I want to love these steps that have led me to where I am the way that you do. God, help me to position my heart and my vulnerability in such a way that I don't cringe and I don't feel shame, but instead that I'm willing to blot out the transgressions just like you did and see myself as whole, to see myself as pure and my most naked, vulnerable state. A lot of times we want God to just erase it from our mind. God, I wish I could go back in time and just forget that ex-boyfriend. I wish I could go back in time and forget that time that I was deceitful. I wish I could go back in time and change it all. And God says, I do not need you to go back in time. I need you to make the best of the time that you were standing in by trusting that if you are still alive, if I allowed you to face it, it is because I can redeem it. If you have ever found yourself in a circumstance that felt like this is beyond redemption. I'll never be able to move past this heartbreak. I'll never be able to move past this shame. This is not the end for you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get big and bad like our God and start saying that this is just the beginning. That means that your ending has not occurred. And if you are writing a finale or a conclusion when God is just getting started, then my job is to have you drop the pen because we are a about to start navigating through the past of your life with God's grace and God's perspective as our God. And what you are going to discover is that God wastes nothing. What you are going to discover is that God can redeem everything and God can position your life, your mind, and your heart in such a way that you are saying to yourself, God, I'm glad that you work all things together. God, I'm glad that that wasn't the end for me. God, I'm glad that I dared to get naked, that I dared to bear my soul. You know, there's a woman in the Bible who I think embodies this principle of getting naked like perhaps no other woman. Her name is Naomi. Let me tell you about Naomi. Naomi loses her children. She loses her husband. And instead of like putting on her cute church girl face, Naomi is like, mm -mm, I am bitter. Imagine asking someone how they were doing after a heartbreak and them saying, I'm bitter. We wouldn't even know how to handle that level of response because we are so used to people just pretending to be okay. We're so used to people just trucking along and saying, I've got this and, and I'm being strong. But no, Naomi dares to be honest. She says that life has changed her name. You're connecting with me in this moment and just between you and I, you can be honest enough to admit that there's been some moments where life tried to change your name. Maybe you're standing in that season right now. The thing about when our name changes because of an experience or a mindset is that it may not change it on the outside like it did for Naomi, but it changes us on the inside where we should have hope, we hear failure, where we should have restoration, we feel rejection, abandonment. I don't know how life tried to change your name and I don't know how it pops up in your life. Maybe it's when you lay your head down on the pillow, giving your best to the day and still thinking, not enough. Maybe it haunts you and taunts you throughout the day. Whenever you open up your mouth to speak, life says you don't have what it takes. You're going to not be articulate. You could never be intellectual enough to contribute to this conversation. Life has a way of changing our name in a way that we only answer to on the inside. My assignment, my job, the work that I want to do with you is I want to change what you are answering to on the inside. If we can change what you answer to on the inside, it won't matter what anyone else says on the outside. Because if we're honest, what people say on the outside is often an echo of what we're already hearing on the inside. But when God wants to do an inner transformational work on you, the reason why he needs your nakedness is because God wants to help you fortify yourself on the inside so that you can show up in spaces and recognize that the only thing that matters is what God says about you. Naomi's standing in this moment. She's naked. She's grieving. She's a widow and she's got this woman who's sticking with her no matter what. And Naomi still says, this is my truth. When we find Naomi in the first chapter of Ruth, 
She's in the most difficult season of her life. I have a feeling some of you can relate to that. And in this moment, she changes her name. She says, call me Mara, for the Lord has dealt with me bitterly. She's willing to accept that this is not just her truth about where she is, but also her perspective on how God has dealt with her. And yet Naomi's truthful enough to say, this is where I am. And from that place of truth, God meets her. I am so grateful for a God who will meet us in our nakedness, not in who we pretend to be, not in who we have to be in order to show up in our groups. But God says, I can deal with your truth. If we continue journeying on the way that Naomi did, then we will see that on one hand, she felt like the Lord was dealing with her bitterly. But on the other hand, God had hidden in that moment of bitterness restoration. You see, for every dark season we're in, there is a seed of restoration connected to it. But we have to be willing to keep watering that seed even in the darkness. We have to dare to keep showing up even in those seasons of frustration. The same God that did it for Naomi thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago is the same God who will continue to show up for me. And so, God, I am trusting that as I allow myself to be naked, as I allow myself to stand in my truth, that your anointing and your power is going to meet me right there. I'm thinking of my favorite scripture. My favorite scripture says that God's strength, that the strength of Jesus is made perfect in my weakness. And so my job then is not to be strong. It's not to be the woman who has it all together. My job is to get naked because it's from that place of weakness where I wanna experience transformation. And let me tell you something, friend, there is not a woman or man on the planet who doesn't have an area of weakness. And yet in this sacred space that we're creating, we're gonna stand boldly in our weakness. And we're gonna do so, one, by remembering that our weakness does not make us weak, that our weakness does not define us that that is actually the place that God wants to meet so that he can bring it to a place of greater strength. I feel that for somebody who's watching this right now. God wants to bring you to a place of greater strength. And it's not going to be by you pretending to be strong, but this type of strength that God's going to give you is going to come from the place of your vulnerability. It's going to come from the place of your truth and your honesty. But it is going to require that you admit that I've been covering myself up with fig leaves. I've been piling on achievements. I've been piling on relationships. I've been piling on habits that I thought would make me better, but now I'm ready to say, God, at the end of the day, this is who I am. When we surrender to that level of transformation, we are clay on the potter's wheel, and God gets excited. Naomi gets on that potter's wheel with all of her bitterness, with all of her little stank attitude. Let me tell you, Ruth, Naomi told Ruth, don't even come with me. I don't want any company. I don't want anyone around me. Right now, we need to just thank God for friends who don't listen to us. We need to thank God for those friends who are like, girl, I don't care. You're going to put that bonnet on your head. You're going to come out of this house. You're going to come to this Bible study group because at the end of the day, God places partners in our life to help us move out of that place of bitterness. And Naomi gets on that potter's wheel and she allows God to just keep spinning, just keep spinning, just keep working, just keep transforming, just keep molding me. And little by little before the book of Ruth is closed, we see the woman who started off from a place of of great loss, experiencing redemption. She experiences God's restoration because she decided to be honest and to be truthful, but to stay in the fight anyway. I want to commend someone who's connected right now and you've been staying in the fight. But maybe you thought staying in the fight meant pretending that you were okay. I want to give you permission to not be okay, but to still be in the fight. I'm still fighting for my joy. I'm still fighting for my faith. I'm still fighting for my peace, but it is hard. God, I don't always understand your ways. God, I don't always understand why I feel like I'm the one who's limping along in life. But you know what? That is what attracts God. Our humanity, our brokenness, our weakness. That's why God sent Jesus. Because God understood that there are going to be moments where you need 
someone to make up the difference. You would invite Jesus into that space. You would receive the covering that only God can provide. This is a covering that cannot happen by degrees. It doesn't happen by relationships. You don't volunteer your way into this level of covering. This is the only type of covering that comes from relationship. Your relationship with God is gonna make all of the difference. And from that place and that place only, will you begin to experience the transformation that you're longing for. Your confidence, your hope, your purpose, your clarity, your strength, it's all waiting in that vulnerability. Let's grow together. Let's journey together because we're gonna be transformed and evolve together. And when it's all said and done, there will be no doubt that God was there in the midst of it all. You know, it reminds me about Eve's my homegirl because I love the way that God shows up for her in that most vulnerable moment. You know, we're talking about the fruit and the tree and the serpent and all of that, but he asks this question that like kind of comes out of nowhere. And God says, who told you you were naked? Like that seemed like the least of the issues in the garden in that moment, but he wanted to know how did you get in your mind that there was something wrong with who you are and the way that I created you. And I feel like that's what we have to be willing to ask ourselves when we dive in to the work of transformation is like, who told you? When was the first time you felt naked? And do you trust that God can cover you? Yes.